this is Dan Reeves. We're about to start. Is Mr. Holder on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Well, I want to say first and foremost, uh, good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, it is not lost on me that the three individuals here today uh, present and uh, with Mr. Eric Holder on the line uh, from Washington, D.C., that when you have the last names of Chu, uh, Lara, as well as De Leon, I'm sure that uh, it uh, vexes the president as well as the uh, Attorney General of the United States of America that you have three men, thank you very much, with three men of color, perhaps are maybe the original bad hombres that uh, uh, President Trump talked about uh, earlier during the course of his campaign. Um, I have directed the former U.S. Uh, Attorney uh, General of the United States of America, Eric Holder, whose law from Covington and Burling is on retainer with the California State Senate to seek uh, permission. Uh, of the court to file an amicus brief in response to the lawsuit filed by the United, S the United States Department of Justice. The United States Attorney General Jeff Sessions has targeted California because we refuse to help the Trump administration tear apart hard-working, honest families. This lawsuit is less about gangs and MS-13 and more about intimidating the state of California into conforming our values to President Trump's inhumane and xenophobic immigration policies. California will not be bowed. We shall see Mr. Sessions in court. Based on the United States Department of Justice track record in court, quite frankly, I like our odds. Last summer, I directed Eric Holder to send a letter to Mr. Sessions, and we'll make that uh, letter available to all of you today that California has the constitutional power to prioritize its limited resources in areas of state concern. That state concern would be how we spend our precious public safety dollars. Senate Bill 54, the California Values Act, also known as the Sanctuary State Bill, represents California's constitutional exercise of that sovereign authority. California is not required, in other words, to divert those resources and compromise its security to enforce federal immigration laws. No, let me be very clear. California won't help President Trump, won't help Jeff Sessions, or ISIS attack dog Thomas Holman, rip children from the arms of their mothers. Inhumane treatment one would expect in a rogue nation, not the greatest nation. Cities and counties that refuse to enforce immigration laws are not only safer, but by comparison, they are economically better off. If it galls the U.S. Attorney General and the President that we won't help enforce their racist, xenophobic immigration policies, well, we say, tough. We embrace the cultural gifts immigrants bestow on us and their diversity, and they are the backbone of our economy and we will do everything within our legal power to protect them. They are less of a public safety threat than native-born residents. In fact, studies have shown that crime rates in immigrant neighborhoods actually are lower than other neighborhoods. If Mr. Sessions, the Attorney General of the United States of America, is in fact concerned about crime, he should focus more on his own backyard. According to 2016 FBI crime statistics, violent crime and property crime rates in Alabama are significantly higher, much higher than they are in California. With us on the line today, we have David Zions of Covington, as well as Monica Ramirez Amanadi from Covington, and the 82nd Attorney General of the United States of America, Eric Holder. Uh, Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you, and then we'll go with our colleagues here uh, from the Senate as well as the Assembly. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon to uh, everybody. Uh, let me say that uh, consistent with the directives of our client, um, Senate uh, President De Leon and the other members of the state Senate, we will be seeking permission to file uh, an amicus brief to uh, expand for the court, uh, considerations it should take into account 
when making a determination as to whether or not the lawsuit filed by the Justice Department uh, yesterday is, in fact, an appropriate one. Uh, from my perspective, the Trump administration's lawsuit is really a political and unconstitutional attack on the state of California's well-established rights under our system of government. The, the, the Supreme Court has made it really absolutely clear that states cannot be forced to divert its resources to help the federal government enforce federal law. And the Trump administration can pursue, if it wants, misguided and self-defeating uh, immigration policies, if that's what it wants to do. But it cannot insist that the state of California use its money and its resources to help in that effort. Now, Californians, through its legislature, uh, have made a decision that reflects their values and their priorities. And Californians concluded that they should not commit the limited resources that they have on the Trump administration's warped view of immigration and immigration enforcement. Uh, now, the California legislature made this decision very carefully, uh, and a, a balance was struck to ensure that cooperation with the federal government continues in appropriate cases, in appropriate ways, to keep violent criminals off the streets. Jeff Sessions doesn't get to punish Californians because they aren't willing to sign up to help what I would consider an extreme agenda. Now, as uh, Senate President uh, De Leon said, the, the California Values Act, SB 54, represents California's judgment that preserving and enhancing trust, and that's really critical, enhancing and preserving trust between law enforcement and the diverse communities that they serve is really essential for the safety and well-being of all residents of the great state of California. Without that trust, immigrants avoid reporting crimes, whether they are witnesses or victims, because they fear that contacting local law enforcement may lead to their removal from the United States and being ripped away from their livelihood, their families, as well as from their communities. Uh, the California Values Act recognizes that California residents will be safer. Now, this is, is something that's important. The California residents will be safer if local law enforcement preserves this trust and focuses on its job of ensuring the safety and well-being of all Californians while leaving immigration enforcement, which is the federal government's job, to the federal government. The Constitution guarantees to California that choice. And let me just end by saying that contrary to the Trump administration's assertion, the California Values Act does not interfere with, does not obstruct the enforcement of federal immigration programs by federal law enforcement officers and is not otherwise preempted by federal immigration law. The lawsuit disregards that the act specifically allows certain forms of cooperation and complies with all relevant federal law. I'll pass it back to you, Mr. President. Mr. Attorney General, thank you very much. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to uh, Senator Ricardo Lara and then Assemblymember David Chu, who will discuss their respective pieces of legislation that are under threat uh, with the lawsuit of the Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Uh, Senator Ricardo Lara. Thank you. Thank you. Last year, California really made history by becoming the only state to give the authority of our Attorney General to look at what's really happening in the con and the conditions of our immigration detention centers. Uh, it was unprecedented that we were able to secure a million dollars in our budget and give specifically the authority to Attorney General Javier Becerra to really see what we've been hearing in terms of what has been a very closed um, uh, community when it comes to what is really happening in our immigration detention centers, both for profit and public. We've seen time and time again by ICE's own uh, recommendations and uh, standards that there's been multiple deaths, there has been misclassification of immigrants in these detention centers, there have been pregnant women without appropriate accommodations, and children in uh, cells with actual criminals. And so for us, it was an opportunity to not only be first in the nation to be able to offer this to see what's really happening, but also put a moratorium on these for-profit detention centers, both in, uh, that currently exist, but also to really get to find out what is happening in these areas. And that was a tremendous victory for us in the state budget. Uh, now, for some reason, uh, Attorney General Jeff Session thinks that is gonna create an obstruction to their work 
uh, through ICE, which is ludicrous at best, because we're not limiting their work whatsoever. They can still detain immigrants. They can still place them in the detention centers. But what we have now, what we didn't have before, is the power and the authority of our own attorney general to look and investigate what the conditions are in these so-called detention centers. And they're called centers, but let's not be fooled. This is jail. These are people going without care. These are people going without access to an attorney. And many times, activists have to fight their way into these detention centers to see what is really happening. And these are rights and recommendations that ICE has own recommended that should be implemented in these detention centers that currently are not being respected. And so we're using ICE's own standards as the foundation for the work that we have done in the budget and what we did through SB 29 that are now under scrutiny by Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Again, we feel this is just a political ploy. This uh, is clearly within our right as a state to determine what are the conditions in these immigration detention centers within the borders of our state. And we look forward to having our day in court and fighting to ensure that the immigrants that are being detained in these centers have adequate food, that they have a place to sleep in, that they have adequate shelter so that um, their lives can be protected just as we do anybody who is detained in this state. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Ricardo Lara. Oh, we have Assembly Member David Chu from San Francisco. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. And I, first, let me start by appreciating the leadership here in the Senate and here in Sacramento uh, as we are standing up for immigrant families and our immigrant workers. Unfortunately, we are here because Jeff Sessions decided to come today to California on a publicity stunt as he sues our state. Also, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Sessions, as well as our president, has forgotten that the United States was built on the backs of immigrants, that our future success depends on immigrant, and in particular, immigrant workers. The Trump administration has declared war on our immigrant families with unconstitutional executive orders and with proposals to hire 10,000 new ICE agents. He is leading the most xenophobic, anti-immigrant, and racist presidential administration in modern history. And we are here because we had authored bills to ensure that we are not aiding and abetting his out-of-control deportation machine. Last night, when I learned that Jeff Session had sued the laws that we are discussing, uh, including the bill that I had authored, AB 450, the Immigrant Worker Protection Act, I was disturbed, but not surprised. Uh, and I think many of us have been asked this morning if we could speak to Mr. Sessions, what would we say? And I would say to him, I would ask him to read the Constitution, to follow the Constitution. In the Constitution is the Fourth Amendment. It says that people in the United States have a right to not be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures. This applies in the context of ICE and ICE raids. And our law, AB 450, simply says to follow the Constitution. If there is going to be an ICE raid, ICE agents need to provide the appropriate paperwork. The bill says that employers shall ask for a judicial warrant if there's going to be a raid conducted at a workplace or ask for uh, a subpoena before confidential employee information is provided. This is what any of us would do uh, if someone came knocking on our doors. Unfortunately, we are in this situation because the Trump administration and his Republican allies have failed to pass comprehensive immigration reform. And ever since Donald Trump was elected, we've anticipated these workplace rates. Unfortunately, in our state of California, we have many, many workers who lack documentation because of the failure to pass comprehensive immigration reform. In our agriculture industry, it's estimated one out of two workers lacks documentation. In our restaurant industry, one out of three. In our construction and trades, one out of five. Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions know this. Their goal is to disrupt the sixth largest economy in the world that is here in California. I want to thank my colleagues also for other laws that we've moved forward to establish a sanctuary state. Uh, the goal of our bills uh, is to make sure that our families are safe. As a former criminal prosecutor, I know that the policies that we've moved forward to further cooperation and trust between our immigrant communities and local law enforcement builds that trust. 
Let me just close by also observing, as the pro tem observed, uh, who we are today. The three of us, we are of immigrant backgrounds. We are either immigrants ourselves or the sons, the children of immigrants. I was a former immigrant rights attorney. All of us were shaped uh, years ago, uh, I think from a, from a political formative standpoint, when another executive of this state tried to propose with Proposition 187 that immigrants be scapegoated and tarred. And while that was a very difficult time in our state's history, history has borne us out. And I think that history will, again, uh, reiterate that immigrants are the backbone of our economy, are the future of our success, uh, and that is why we are here uh, and uh, very much appreciate the work of our Attorney General, uh, as well as I want to just take a moment and thank our California Labor Commissioner who has helped to enforce uh, the laws that we put in place, as well as uh, the leadership of labor, as well as our Democratic colleagues who ensure that these laws are put in place to protect our immigrant families and ensure that our communities are not ripped apart. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you very much, Assemblymember uh, David Chu, for your very powerful and for your very eloquent words. So what we're going to do is, before we go to questions and answers of, of ourselves uh, around this table and the Attorney General, as well as uh, Mr. Zayan and Ms. Ramirez, who are on the line, let me just take about 60 seconds. Let me take about 60 seconds very quickly to, to share a few words uh, in Spanish. Si el fiscal general de los Estados Unidos, Jeff Sessions, está demandando a California porque nos negamos a ayudar a este presidente, ese presidente con sus políticas repugnantes, separar inhumanamente a las familias honestas y trabajadores, voy a empatizar y subrayar lo siguiente. Yo les digo, estamos listos. El proyecto de ley 54 y las políticas del senador Ricardo Lara y el asambleísta David Chu, el Acta de los Valores de California, representa el ejercicio constitucional de California, de esa autoridad soberana, que quede muy claro. No es nuestra respuesta. California no ayudará al presidente Trump, al Jeff Sessions, el fiscal general, o su perro rabioso, Thomas Holman, de ICE separar cruelmente a los niños de los, este, de los brazos de sus madres, un trato humano que uno esperaría en una nación de canallas, no la nación más poderosa, que es la nuestra, de este gran país. Si el fiscal general de los Estados Unidos, Jeff Sessions, y el presidente les da rabia porque no ayudaremos a hacer cumplir sus políticas repugnantes públicas de migración racistas y xenofóbicas, tendrán que aguantarse. Punto. Que quede muy claro. Si el fiscal general Jeff Sessions está preocupado por el crimen, debería enfocarse más en su propio estado, el estado de Alabama. De acuerdo con los datos, estadísticas de delitos de la FBI del año 2016, el número de crímenes violentos en su estado, Alabama, es demasiado mucho más alto en comparación con un estado dorado como lo nuestro, el estado de California. So with that, uh, I will open up to questions uh, and answers and <coughs> commentaries uh, from the press. We have Eric Holder uh, on the line. Obviously, we have Senator Ricardo Lara, and we have Assembly Member David Chu. Eric, are you there? Eric, the question is uh, from Dan Walters uh, from the Sacramento. Uh, Dan Moraine, I'm sorry, Dan Moraine. <laughs> Dan Walters lives in my head. You know? <laughs> no. From Dan Moraine, one of the illustrious uh, reporters uh, from California. It, uh, repeat it one more time, Dan. Uh, what what kind of discovery do you think the defendants could elicit uh, out of? Out of um, Eric, what kind of discovery can the defendants elicit from the Trump administration? Well, I think that's actually a, pr a pretty interesting question. I mean, I think one of the things that we would obviously want to do would be to find out to the extent that we can what's the true motivation uh, behind the, uh, this, this immigration effort and, and the, the lawsuit that has been, has been filed. Um, you know, to see as much as we are allowed to see uh, the interaction 
between the various components within the federal government, within the Justice Department, uh, to elicit, if we can, um, what is the, as I said, the motivation behind the suit. Because I actually think this is, uh, in some ways, a pretty clear-cut case uh, on the, in terms of the law. And I think that what you have here is really a, a, a political expression by the, the Trump administration as opposed to a, a legal concern. And I, I think also that what they have done uh, by filing this suit yesterday uh, is to cave in to the more radical parts of the administration, um, uh, if that's possible. I don't know how do you say radical, of what, the radical part of a radical administration, but the, the extreme part of a radical administration, giving in to them. Um, and uh, filing a lawsuit that I think is, is, is pretty clearly without much basis. You got that, Dan? Yeah. All right. Just or two. Or yeah. Sure. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab as an attorney, uh, although clearly I'm not the attorney in this case, and that is uh, left to the work of the Attorney General. Uh, one of the contentions and the concerns that we've had is that ICE is not following its own regulations when it conducts workplace raids, uh, that they're simply banging down doors, flashing a badge, and going in. And uh, I think it is an entirely appropriate question for the state of California uh, in the discovery process to ask ICE how often have you produced paperwork? Under what circumstances are you producing paperwork? Are you violating your own federal law, your own regulations, and the Constitution? So is that your belief, uh, Assembly Member, that, that they're not following the law? It's not my belief. It is what I have seen as a former immigrant rights attorney. It is certainly what I have known uh, throughout my career, uh, that ICE and before it, the INS, uh, would routinely uh, conduct inspections without appropriate paperwork. We've heard reports from the press, even in recent weeks, of, uh, of investigations that uh, we believe are pretextual and simply reflect racial profiling in the state of California. Let me, uh, let me add that it seems to us that uh, we have a, a rogue federal operation currently making up the rules as they go. Uh, this is a, a very clear uh, retribution uh, from the bills that we passed uh, last year. It's also clear retribution uh, back in 2016 on November 8th. Uh, Californians by margin of two to one rejected the politics, fueled by resentment, fueled by misogyny, and fueled by bigotry. Uh, so from day one, California has been in the crosshairs of this president and especially this uh, attorney general. So we have a rogue operation happening out of the federal government headed up by the top cop of the nation. Uh, so um, that's why we're in the situation we're in today because we believe that uh, when, we, when I wrote uh, Senate Bill 54, uh, working closely with the former attorney general, that we were on solid constitutional legal ground. So we welcome this lawsuit and uh, we will beat them in the court of law. Bueno, este, que quede muy claro. Acabo de decir que desde el 2016 este presidente no ha tenido este, el Estado de California bajo una lupa, eh, buscando pretexto para hacer todo lo posible para detener y deportar a nuestra gente trabajadora. Por eso estamos preparando, trabajando con el, muy de cerca con el ex fiscal general de los Estados Unidos, Eric Holder, y estamos preparados para ganar este, en la corte. Senator, did the U.S. Attorney General's Office make any attempt to confer with anybody here, whether our Attorney General or anybody in the office, uh, about their concerns over these laws, and did they give you any indication that this was going to be upcoming if there wasn't additional legislation or something to make them less concerned? I won't speak on behalf of the Attorney General Javier Becerra or uh, the Governor um, uh, Jerry Brown. I, I'll speak on behalf of the legislative branch and specifically the California State Senate, uh, we haven't received any uh, direct uh, edict via email, via letter, or telephone call uh, from the Attorney General's office in Washington, D.C., or for that matter, any district office throughout the nation or back here in California with regards to any concerns about any of the respective measures that are being discussed today. Um, what we have heard incessantly uh, are opinions and commentaries uh, on Fox News, on, on Breitbart, and other uh, media outlets, uh, but never picking up the phone, sending a letter, 
or uh, 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 sending an email, uh, pressing enter and say, hey, these are our concerns, can you work with us? Um, can we you know, meet somewhere in the middle? And these, these are the potential unintended consequences, uh, will you work with us? In short, there's been no collaboration or cooperation on their part, and they knew our positions from day one, so there was never any attempt on their part to, 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 to reach out to us. Well, no, I don't believe in open borders. I, I believe that every nation in the world, including the United States of America, has a right to protect its own sovereignty. So um, I think that, again, it's a conflation of uh, the views of a, of a small group of individuals in comparison to the rest of the country and the, and the values of Californians. Uh, as David Chu just mentioned, we're the immigrants or we're the son of immigrants, so we've been shaped by the immigrant experience. And I've never advocated, you know, contrary to what popular belief may be, uh, on any of us uh, for open borders. That's silly. Um, the Obama administration would set up uh, the suits against an AG uh, State Bill 1070. Arizona. Uh, yes. Uh, there, um, the parts of that law were struck down by the Supreme Court under the Supremacy Clause. Doesn't that standard suggest parts of the California law will also be on No, because I, th I think that that standard that they're using in comparison to, uh, uh, you're referring to Senate Bill 1070 from Arizona, uh, that is something that's dramatically different. <coughs> I don't think that's a template that can be used uh, verbatim legally uh, to say that uh, they're going to strike down either all of the provisions of SB 54 or the provisions or the measures themselves of our colleagues. That's a very separate uh, situation. They're going to use that as a, as, a, as a template. There's no question about it, you know. But uh, we believe, you know, and I can only speak on behalf of Senate Bill 54, um, from day one, we always felt supremely confident uh, that our measure was co is constitutional and would pass muster. Uh, before a judge's eyes, if in fact we were ever sued and litigated. <laughs> we're being sued and litigated, so we will meet uh, the, uh, the Attorney General in court. <clears throat> uh, Eric, uh, the question is from a reporter uh, with regards to the Senate Bill uh, 1070, remember, with Arizona? Right, yep. And if there's any comparisons with 1070 when you were Attorney General under uh, then-President Barack Obama and the template that uh, Jeff Sessions and their lawyers at DOJ are, are articulating uh, publicly that they're using that as a template to come after Senate Bill 54. No, I mean, if you look at um, SB 54, that stands really in stark contrast, I mean, in really stark contrast to the state laws that were invalidated in the Arizona case. I mean, rather than creating a, a separate state enforcement scheme to regulate immigration as Arizona did, uh, SB 54 constitutes an exercise of state authority that it, in, in core areas of state sovereignty, involving the health and safety of its residents, allocation of state resources, uh, and supervision of state and local employees. You know, the Supreme Court and other courts have held that, that state laws like those at issue in Arizona were preempted by federal immigration law when the states tried to, to regulate immigration themselves and intruded on the federal government's authority. SB 54 has no similar risk of preemption because it leaves federal immigration enforcement to federal authorities, and that does not interfere with the federal government's authority, while the state would exercise its constitutional prerogative to focus on state priorities. So you're really comparing apples and oranges here. Um, SB 54 uh, acknowledges and is consistent with um, our constitutional scheme, whereas the 1070 law out of Arizona try to superimpose a structure not recognized by our founding documents. Let, let, let me be very clear about this. Um, we're under no illusion that, uh, that any legislator, any leader of the Senate, any governor, any mayor, any state attorney general can usurp federal immigration laws. Federal immigration laws are just that. They are federal. Um, there's only one branch of government uh, that can execute the authority of federal immigration laws, and that is the f federal executive branch. Um, but that being said, 
we don't have to spend a single cent of local taxpayer dollars um, or lift a single finger to be a cog in the Trump deportation machine. There's never been an argument, never there has been an argument with regards to criminal violent felons. Our position always been is good riddance, whether you're from Ireland, whether you're from Mexico, whether you're from China or elsewhere. We don't care where you're from. Good riddance. But when we're talking about hardworking families and conflating hardworking families with gang members and MS-13, you know, that's a different ballgame altogether. And local government or state government doesn't have to spend a single penny to be, again, a, a, uh, an extension of the Trump deportation machine. We're not interfering with immigration law. That's the federal immigration's uh, authority and right to execute. We're not getting in their way, but we're not helping to facilitate tearing mothers uh, from their children and children from their fathers. If I could just add with regards to AB 450, um, our state law is meant to complement federal law because we believe that the Trump administration will be violating federal law. So under the Constitution, under the federal law, under federal regulations, ICE agents are supposed to be providing this documentation when they do ICE raids, and our state law simply says, let's see that documentation. Let's make sure that's happening because we've anticipated that Trump's ICE agents will not be doing that. And, and just similarly to close on, on this issue, again, to reiterate, we are using ICE's own standards as a framework for how immigrants should be treated in these immigration detention centers. So again, we're not interfering with immigrants being placed in these centers. What we're saying is let's give them basic human rights that anybody who's detained in this state obtains, whether that's a call to a family, a call to um, an attorney, so that they can understand what their rights are. It seems that all this, in honesty, is, honestly, is just an attempt to bully us to try to stop us from continuing what we've been doing is pro, you know, working on legislation that incorporates our immigrants into our society, that allows them to further contribute to our economy. And you know, I'm gonna say this, my parents didn't cross the border here and risk their lives so that I can step aside and allow this to happen to other folks. We're gonna fight and we're not gonna be bullied by this president, this administration, or this attorney general. And so if he wants a fight, he's going to get one. And, you know, we look forward to seeing him in court. Senor de León, ¿qué mensaje le envía a la comunidad que tiene miedo hoy más que nunca, además a aquellos que apoyaban a tus medidas en las manifestaciones que miraban en el campo? Sí, de... ese, eh, este, que, que, que no acuden, por favor, al, al, al pánico, a la ansiedad, eh, eh, al miedo. Eh, sin lugar a dudas, este presidente y este fiscal general está haciendo todo lo posible para sembrar las semillas de, de miedo, de pánico, de ansiedad eh, en nuestras comunidades vulnerables, marginadas aquí en California. El papel nuestro, el senador Ricardo Lara, eh, David Chu, su servidor, y también este Javier Becerra, el ex fiscal Eric Holder, el gobernador, y, 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 y cientos de, de, de políticos a lo largo ancho de este, de este gran estado dorado, la sexta potencia mundial, es hacer todo lo posible para proteger y defender los derechos. Estamos en una batalla, sin lugar a dudas, eh, pero tarde o temprano vamos a ganar esta guerra, que queda muy claro. Pero al igual también hay que, hay que, esto ya hemos estado aquí nosotros anterior, hemos visto redadas, hemos visto esos acosos a la comunidad de inmigrante, no queremos que la gente ande con, me, con miedo, pero al igual que ande con precaución, así como lo hacíamos en los noventas y en los ochentas, así, y al igual queremos que, acudan a los servicios que hemos trabajado arduamente para poder proveer a la comunidad inmigrante, ya sea acceso a la educación, acceso al cuidado de salud, acceso a un número de, de recursos que hemos luchado en este Capitolio para que ellos puedan incorporarse a nuestra, a, a nuestra sociedad y a nuestra comunidad. Así que hay que andar con precaución, hay que tener un plan, pero al igual no hay que andar con miedo y no hay que dejar de que eh, el, este gobierno federal este, impida que nosotros sigamos adelante como migrantes. Thank you, everybody. That's uh, no question. That's it. All right. Eric, if you're there, we're signing off. Uh, I'll give you a holler a little later, okay? Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank Goodbye, you. folks. Thank you very much.